Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues. Yes, we are back with the popular Fallout mod, but we're actually going to twist things up just a little bit. This is not your standard Old World Blues, this is actually a small fan fork of the Old World Blues, an extra customized scenario called Lost Expedition, which focuses on telling a new story with some new national focuses for a very specific region. So let's go ahead and start this up here in the West Coast, and we're going to try experiencing a bit of this. Uh, I think I need to select my own country. We are going to Colorado, and I'm looking for a group called the Baggers. Oh, here they are. Way over here? Okay. Is that actually as far east as Colorado might be? It might be, actually. I honestly don't remember. The borders are all weird, and it's confusing my brain. Anyway, these guys have a special localized story that we are going to be experiencing today. So, let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what is involved in this. I'm actually seeing a lot more of these individual Old World Blues mods coming out by fans of the, uh, the Fallout-themed base mod, and they're kind of coming out with their own small focused stories, which I think is great. Because it's a way of continuing to expand out some of the content of Old World Blues for the uh, average person to kind of contribute, but not take on a massive undertaking like a huge overhaul mod on their own. Just kind of piggybacking off of that just results in us having more stories and more content. Me likey. Okay, here we go. Now to start off, it looks like we only have about five units that we can rely on. That's not a whole lot. Let's take a look at the national focuses and see what we got. The Colorado Expedition! Formulated a long time ago, I hardly would count it many years we got stranded here. Can it be that we started our own journey more than 20 years ago now? Alright, so I'm imagining we're going to get some little pop-ups telling a story here. That is going to be a guess. We will see. Four research slots to start isn't half bad. And it looks like as far as technology, we are kind of in the civilized but not advanced route for most things, but we do not have access to power armor. I call that a little unfortunate because I'm obviously a big fan of the power armor, but okay. Interesting. Ohm's Law appeal to refugees. Is that something they added relatively recently? Diplomacy distance refugee assimilation factor. There might have actually been an update to Old World Blues that I missed. I mean, it's been what? Like four months since I last played Hoi 4 on the channel? Something along those lines, so... Could be that I missed something else kind of fun. I think we're going to go for the monthly population kind of early on. That's usually pretty good. And as far as some factories, um, we don't really have much to work with as far as building slots. I may have no choice but to build out another military factory just so I can continue producing the equipment to have some troops. But if we don't expand soon, I'm not going to have pretty much anywhere that I can go. Let's take a look at our decisions. Uh, we already know about the bottle caps economy. Nothing really new there. Bribes, signing bonuses, investments, caravans... And some basic intros that I don't really care about. Okay. Doesn't look like anything exciting there. So I think we just wait. And we're going to finish up some of our initial... Um, our initial focuses. Now I believe... Oh, hello. Uh, yes. This is the caps thing. I think I'll just go ahead and ignore this for the moment. Um, I believe that part of the story is going to have to do with us being an expedition sent from the New California Republic, and in their uh, influence, in their shadow, we're going to try to create a new Colorado Republic, I believe, but we're going to see. The Colorado Expedition, as an idea, was organized a bit more than 20 years ago. And if I remember correctly, President Tandy was still alive, and she, she was who gave her permission for the endeavor. A couple of dozen scientists, led by my humble self, Goddard, and three battalions worth of NCR troopers under the high command of General Coleridge made his way into the Boulder Dome, Colorado. The expedition was doomed from the very second of its inception, as it was plagued by infighting caused by Ego's tragic accidents along our way and by terrible decisions, which are all made because of the previous two. Through our journey, we made a stop and briefly studied the electric capabilities of the miraculously still functioning Hoover Dam and wrote a paper on how to further repair it. As someone who studied Gecko's power plant before, it was more or less a routine job, Miss Bell, but I still enjoyed it. Discovered the wreckage of the old bomb station 002 in the ground of the Grand Canyon and left a small team to further investigate it. Traveled on a ship to the Colorado River up north, and after a short trip to Denver, or as is now called Dog City, where we traded with and resupplied by the local scavengers, we headed to the dome. It was a very run-on way to say that we're going to the Colorado Dome. Since then... Our numbers dwindled to extreme levels, and our brief occupation of the dome only brought us a handful of resources to our current camp, which now we survive on. I cannot even remember it now. Larson, what we saved from the dome when the accident happened. What did we say? Well, we could have say, say we got some electricity or we got some machine parts. Uh, I don't know which one we're really going to need. Um, I mean, we don't have... 
Let's see, as far as like parts and stuff, we're probably gonna say that we want to get as much scrap metal as possible. Scrap metal so we can continue building pipe guns and such later. Probably is gonna be the way to go. Seven days for Presper's Legacy to continue on with the story. And this is very standard old world blues at this point. Typically the first like few national focuses are to tell a story more than anything. We do have a couple of advisors at the beginning of the game. We have Agnes, which is giving me some research speed and political power gain reduction. And also Sergeant Larson, which is reducing my stability, but attack bonus against ghoul nations 10%. If we're surrounded by ghouls, I could see that being pretty helpful. Standard wages, discouraging traders, a wasteland economy, muzzle descent, we do not allow slavery, and chems are banned. Plus a few other random things here which don't seem that crazy. Funded militias at least give me a pretty good amount of recruitable population. That's not bad. We're ruled right now by the intellectuals. We might change that to being ruled by the people later, depending on how the story goes. We'll see. What we found, there was nothing of expectable. And now I didn't refer to the scientific miracle of the dome. What we found was a man from the old world. A man who slept through at the ages of cryogenic freezing, and now infamous and, if I can say in my humble opinion, quite hateable Victor Presper. Having a massive ego, short temper, and an incredible messed up head, it was hard to believe that this man once titled the smartest man of the USA. His brilliance was unquestionable, even when his hunger for knowledge and lunatic ideas has kicked in. I cannot take away from him. Yet I have to disclaim that I am not even the slightest was jealous of him. There, there's definitely there's definitely a lot of grammatical errors in this one. Just bear with me. I think we'll get through it. Our arrival has awakened him and his companions, whom numbers were surprisingly high. We tried to cooperate with them firstly, and this short time that we had spent together was efficient, to say the least. It was beautiful and typical as it can be. Progress was made, and we got a lot of argument about theses, theories, and other egghead stuff that I don't want to bore you with. It was just like back at the Academy of the NCR, and nostalgia like that can warm up an old man's cold heart. Then, just to quote our security chief, everything went to crap. Okay, get the event, the fall of Victor Presper. Presper, from the very first second that we have met, had his own ideas, secret researches, and lunatic theories about life and the condition of the wasteland. He was scheming something in the shadows, and after a period of a given time, he presented them to us. He wanted to clean the slate, kill everyone off who he deemed unworthy, imbecile, a lower life form, or whatever, our people, and more. Of course, we resisted, but not only, uh, sorry, and not only us, but a couple of his frozen colleagues as well. There was some shouting, some begging, some firefight. Lots of body do dropped dead. We were lucky that somehow he managed to we managed to survive and could evacuate from the place in time, and we didn't lose too many precious men. Our battalions are torn, of course, but they are easily replaceable. Uh, but we have also lost some important engineers and scientists, but not only because of the skirmishes between us and Presper, we lost some of them because of Presper's speech. Xi'an and a couple of more went with Victor. Traitors. I believe Xi'an is a director now, and taking command over a small team we left at the Grand Canyon. I hope there was no purging like here. Presper, his name may be cursed, took a lot from us, but in that short, peaceful time when we worked together, we learned from him as well, like, as well. Like, oh well, where did I put my notes? Electronics and communication devices, so we have a boost for electronics or a boost for robotics. Uh, I actually haven't checked. Can we make use of robotics in this particular game here? Um, I mean, we are civilized, so yeah, we probably could make use of the handies and the sentry bots and so on. Do we want to? I don't usually rely very heavily upon um, robots. They are resource intensive, I think, in um, in Old World Blues. Though I think they do reduce how much manpower you need overall, and they have some hardness to them, so they're not bad. Maybe, but I think overall electronics might be the way to go. So we're going to try for that, then we move on to Boulder Dome. A lot of the story is supposed to so center around trying to retake Boulder. Whatever that's going to mean. So maybe we get some really awesome wacky science or something. We're gonna find out, but this is the cool thing about trying up a new uh, a new mod. You never know what you're gonna get, right? Of course, as the goal of the expedition was always centered around the Boulder Dome, I'll have to talk about it as well, Don't, didn't I? So be it. I only could study it for a couple of weeks, but it was glorious. Standing tall over a dying city, proud and unshaken, radiating from a mysterious green light, 
All right, that last one was a poetic overstatement, but even the radioactive danger it posed gave it some sense of mystical beauty. What was in it was just as awe-inspiring. This place once was a center of researching medicine and renewable energy, not even speaking about the robotics development and the rudimentary power armor studies that went on there, but the real treasure that was hidden and forgotten in its deepest parts, if I remember correctly, which means less and less as the years go by, my good friend Paul found it in one of his voyagers around this facility, a still-functioning, although quickly perished, ZAX, Zax, computer. I hope you understand now. We'll have to get back into the dome quickly before that computer finally kills itself. And let me tell you, the last decades probably didn't foster his condition either. Okay, so I think a Zax is like a kind of a super uh, AI type of computer, right? A con construct, I think. So... We gain the Dying Zax computer, which gives research speed for three years, two years, sorry, prepare for the invent inevitable, or while we'll wait, win one extra year to save the computer, it'll come at the high price that we need to pay later. So we can either retake it in two years or three years, but we have to prepare for the inevitable. Come with high prices, huh? I don't know, two years feels like a lot. Maybe we can try for this. Let's go for the kick in the head. The last two decades run through us a lot quicker than I could ever have expected. A generation that has been grown up since. New young faces, both in our army and scientific surf cult, dominates the baggers. We were preparing our homecoming since then. We gathered as many men as we could from the locals and stockpiled the necessary equipment as well. We have waited too long. We have wasted too many times in our little pocket of Colorado. The land has been infested since ghouls, giving us an obstacle and solution for the same time. The only question is, should we use op- up our extra stockpile for our most critical first push, or should we plan a little bit longer ahead and use them longer term investment? So either we gain base war support and some equipment, which we desperately need, or we gain some stability and a new workshop. Ah, well, that's a good question. Um, let's actually take a look at the logistics here. No, not logistics, recruitment. So for reinforcements, we need support equipment and infantry equipment. Since we had to go for the faster solution, maybe we need to go for this for the war support, which is already very low, by the way. I would like the extra off-map uh, off arms workshop, but we need this equipment just to actually strengthen up the units I have right now, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. And that should be enough to strengthen all of them so that we at least now have five fully reinforced units ready to go. I'll probably use General Coleridge as my commanding officer. Seems pretty reasonable, and we could go for another perk. Uh, we have quite a few available for us, so I'm not going to worry about that this second. Let's see what the next focus is going to be. Do we have engineers tuned for war to get me uh, some workshops? Do we put an end to the nightmares and get some claims on the Luminous One's core territories? Or do we get some additional manpower and infantry equipment? Okay. Who are the Luminous Ones? These guys. You look scary. Uh, I think you probably are ghouls. You probably have... A single factory. We have no idea how many troops for sure you are going to have. Two to eight. It'd be a pretty even fight. I think I'm going to go for the claims and see if we can go for some very early aggression. Because I think we need it. Based on the timetable and the way it's being framed, I just kind of suspect that if we don't get in here and take something pretty quick, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now that said, actually, maybe what I do is pull back a little bit. So we can focus our efforts on grabbing Red Mountain and Chugwater. Get both of those. Ignore this front. Let them go down here towards Sydney. I don't care. Get in through here, and maybe we can end this war quickly. So let's go ahead and move the troops up there. We know they have at least a few troops in position already. This might be overly aggressive, but I mean, what are the odds I'm going to be able to train up any more troops anytime soon? I'm going to guess not great. Expeditionary forces at 12 combat width. Yeah, it would take some more support equipment and stuff. We already have recon companies, apparently. Um, I don't, I don't think I can train any more of these. Let's see, 165 manpower as opposed to 100. You only take 72 infantry equipment to get a little bit more. We don't have much. I could train up somebody, I guess. We can train, like, a single extra garrison unit. Though the garrisons suck, so maybe we try for this. We'll try to train up somebody, but I, I know I don't have a lot of equipment. We have to start producing more, and right now we're only producing six pipe guns per week. That's not a lot. So I have to find a way to make do with only the few units we've got right now, somehow. Uh, if I focus fire really hard in the center and break this line, we might be able to get to the victory points and win this war quickly. Maybe. 
Uh, kind of a bit of an existential threat, kind of like right off the bat, right? But, I mean, we'll see. Uh, working fairly well on the tech. I mean, we're starting off with a 7% research boost right now, thanks to the advisor plus the dying Zax computer. So this is okay. We're going faster than most people. And four research slots at the beginning of the game in Old World Blues is not that bad. It's okay. So we'll work with it. I do not have much in the way of manpower. That is going to make my life hard. Washington Brotherhood is already being aggressive. Good for you guys. Look, I got a little soft place in my heart for the, uh, for the Washington Brotherhood. We had a lot of fun with them before, right? What are some of these national spirits we have? Bigotry in the armed forces. Give me some weekly stability. A handful of Republic. Getting a little bit of weekly manpower, more population by a pretty good amount. Consumer goods, not so good. Occupation, appeal, and appeal to refugees. Whatever that means exactly, I don't know. Okay. Well, we're gonna put an end to the nightmares here. We got some organized agriculture that gets me a tiny bit of extra manpower, which is nice. We can go for a bit more, and this is not ahead of time, so I think I double up on the population because manpower is obviously extremely precious in Old World Blues. Lanius's cohort has also declared a war, all right. So I think now we go for the engineers tuned for war. And we're probably just going to go ahead and have to immediately declare war and see if we can make this work. I'm going to focus everything we got right here. And it looks like we can win that. Uh, before they send reinforcements, I think we pin. So we try to beat this down quick. You are going to get up here and then you're going to try to get into Chug Water. You guys are going to get through there and then try to get up into Red Mountain if possible. And I might want to leave one of these behind to assist with this fight, so we have another avenue of possibly pushing through. He's not coming to attack me yet, which I think is interesting. Come on. He is coming to attack me, which is irritating. He's retreating. We need him to give up this fight, which he should do. The Desert Rangers are giving up on this. Yeah, I need, I need all of you to focus fire on this guy. Well, hang on. Eh, maybe not. Well, he's getting some reinforcements in, but he shouldn't have a lot to work with. Shouldn't. Okay, so now we're making a push there. What's up? One of you stay behind and assist with this so that we can make sure we push in from a different direction. We can now kind of reduce his organization further as he tried to retreat in this direction. Which is good. I actually don't need to win this fight, per se. I just need to exhaust him enough that he gives up and I can move into Red Mountain, which we did now. Then, hang on, hang on. Come on. You turn around and attack from this direction. We no longer care about this. Now you head up over here and attack at Chugwater, and with the reinforcements to encircle, maybe we can take that. Okay, uh, let's see. More construction speed. 10%? Absolutely. Seems great. Let's go for the extra factory production, and we already got some production efficiency there. Since we are civilized, we kind of have to go down for improvised tools. So I guess we'll just go ahead and focus up on the economy game more than anything else. You need to stay here in Red Mountain. Don't do anything else. We got cut off, but I honestly don't care. I just care about taking over Chugwater. So now, with all four of you guys fighting together, you should be able to win this. Yes? Looks like we are able to do that. I just need to get rid of this garrison, then we can focus fire everything on the remaining ghouls. And that should win me this war. As long as we sit here with victory points, we should be fine. I'm not even losing that much in manpower, so we're alright. He's just moving around, but he's not coming to reinforce, which is actually a bit of a mistake on his end. Come on, get that organization down. Almost got it, almost got it. And with only five units, we should be able to win this war. Boom, okay. That wasn't too bad. We're going to take all states. We already have claims and stuff, so that makes it a little bit easier. Boom, okay. We've grown a tiny bit. Refugees. In the last 60 days, 336 refugees have fled before our conquering armies. Zero have come to settle in our states. So, if we were to make ourselves attractive to refugees, as other nations are fighting and our neighbors are at war, they might give us manpower? That would be a very interesting proposition now, wouldn't it? Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our second factory, once it does to get repaired, I assume, uh, starts working on guns. We need more of those. Decisions are available. Quarterly income report, not worried about it. Perfect. Okay. So we finished one war. What comes next? Code unity. Or code purity. So I'm guessing this is where we would have to decide, do we want to exterminate or ally ourselves with the ghouls? If we were to be purifying... Our hatred of those twisted by radiation means we cannot choose to recruit any form of mutants. We would lose recruitable population factor, but we would gain weekly stability. 
What would that lead to, though? Uh, chems ban with chems legalized. Medical tech equipment. Luminous ones dies. Red Mountain manpower goes down. So we just start killing all the ghouls who are left in the Luminous Ones territory that we just took. But the resistance goes down. Or purchase hazmat suits, division attrition, then organize the rad troops. Two divisions of auxiliary expeditions with rad troops pumped full with rad away, requiring special forces equipment. We don't have the capacity for all of that. This doesn't seem very good, if I'm being honest. Uh, alternatively, Code Unity, political power, recruitable population, but we lose a lot of stability. Hmm, okay. We lose Sergeant Larson. Resource gain, compliance, attrition reduction, supply consumption reduction, we lose organization and recovery. Okay. And then, different skin, same goals. Ghoul paratroop... Troopers. Huh. Huh. Um. I don't know which we're gonna want, honestly. What's my recruitable population factor right now? It's not very good. 7.5%. <laughs> the thing is, getting additional, um... Stability is generally pretty important. Do we want paratroopers or just regular special forces? I mean, paratroopers can win games if used correctly against the AI. So maybe we do want to work with the, uh, the ghouls. I'm a little concerned about it because I hate losing stability consistently. Stability is pretty important. But maybe we work with the ghouls and try to be good guys? Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I feel I feel mixed on it. Depends on the the ghouls, right? I mean, some ghouls are not insane from the radiation. They're fine, and some totally are. Yeah, you, know, you gotta be careful who you make friends with in this case. I don't know. We don't have a lot of time. Is the other thing. Let's remember that this dying Zach's computer does not give me a lot of time to make my way into Boulder. So, what's the fastest way that we can get there? The city of Boulder, right here. City outside the dome. Home at last. Boulder is renamed. Prepare for homecoming. Road to Boulder. There it is. The with withered dogs. So we have to beeline through something and try to get to the road to Boulder in order to have time to make this work. Because if each of these take like 30 or 40 some days, yeah, that's, that's a good chunk of the amount of time that we have to work with. We gotta get through the withered, uh, the withered dogs, and then we gotta get through something. Home at last, moves capital to Boulder. I'm assuming one of these, if not this one, is going to get me into the Boulder. Who are you? The Withered Dogs? You're the Withered Dogs. Okay. What does our intel say? You don't have a lot of troops. We could win a war against you pretty quick in Cheyenne Mountain. Cheyenne Mountain? Oh, that is. Well, I do know where it is on the map, but I also know about it because, I mean, come on. Stargate, right? That wasn't Cheyenne Mountain, right? God, I hope it was. And Yali! Yali? All right, fine. Don't answer me. That's fine. She's been wearing headphones a lot lately. I gave her my old gaming headset, and now she's just not answering anything. Oh, it's also a large house. It's what you get. You can't uh, you can't get a hold of anybody, right? Got to yell a lot more. Anyway, engineers are tuned for war, which gets me some extra factories. Thank you. Okay. So with that, as much as I would love to go for the manpower and the equipment, so we can train up more troops. I think we're gonna beeline for the code unity. See how that's gonna work out for me. Uh, I do have enough equipment now that we seize from winning that war that I think we can go ahead and add in an extra division of troops. We don't have much to work with. We do need some support equipment to start getting built up. With which, uh, yeah, I guess I should set a factory when the time comes. I thought these guys had a factory. I guess they don't. Well, they got a couple. So why am I not getting as many factories? I don't know. My building speed is absolutely atrocious. Um, I guess I'll have to f swap over to some support equipment just because if I don't get any, I won't be able to, uh, I won't be able to field these troops. But a couple of extra infantry could make a difference, especially when you're gonna be fighting against very weak, uh, neighbors. 
I have no idea how powerful we're going to become. I can't imagine this is going to be as powerful as the New Texas Republic. But, I mean, it's going to be pretty good. The New Texas Republic was a great was a great run for us, honestly. Yeah, it's, it had its quirks, but it was a good one. So, New Colorado, New California, New Texas. Heck, we can go ahead and start forming a new United States. New Republics, all united together. That'd be amazing. I don't know if that's a thing, but it'd be awesome if it were. There's the industry planning. Let's go ahead and work on... Okay, what do we want next? Um, we can either focus on factory outputs and then some efficiency retention or efficiency growth goes down raw factory output. I think I have to go for work as needed because uh, efficiency growth is actually pretty nice. So we're going to go for work as needed next. I know I focused on nothing except for uh, industry techs at this point, but I do think that's going to be the right call for us. Look, you gotta get those balls rolling, you know? Everything's a snowball effect. Whoever can ramp up the fastest is going to win. I have to make some aggressive plays in the early game, but we already were able to conquer one small t uh, area. So if we can keep conquering some of our other neighbors and stuff, that'd be amazing. Do we even get claims on some of these guys for free? Because it'd be nice if we did. You don't have very many troops. You don't have very many troops. We have no idea how many factories they got. These guys have a fair bit. Kind of wondering if I can justify a war goal and maybe kill these guys really quick. How much would it cost me to do that? 45 political power, 225 days to try and take this over. Um, well, we can go to the national focus tree. And let's see if war goal pops up. Or maybe that's just war enthusiasm. Hang on. The war against the Black Canyon Raiders has to have been concluded to do that one. Destabilize them. Interesting. Uh, maybe we can search by claim or something, or annex. Mm. Looking to see if there's any evidence that we're going to get it for free. There's the hang dogs. Yeah, we would. If we go all the way down this route, we would get free claims on them. That feels very slow. Like, I feel like we could probably go for a war against them a lot sooner, but maybe not. Alright, so we went for Code Unity. Uh, now, we are going to go for... Limited Ghoul Acceptance, some Compliance, maybe? Let's take a look, actually. Let's take a look here at the Compliance. Occupied Territories. Right now, not very good, but if we can get up to Wasteland Heroes, we don't need much of a garrison. Sergeant Larson just abandoned me, so that sucks. I think we just lost one of our advisors. Yep. Hey. We have an unassigned division? Fine, fine. What is it? Let's go ahead and set you up along over here. We'll just go ahead and start putting together a war goal, mainly just along here, because nothing... Whoops. Nothing else matters except for victory points in this case. There you go. That's all we care about. As long as you can do that, we're good. Heck, might actually pull you back a smidge so we can really focus fire. Uh, you know what? No, we're fine. We're fine. Having a numbers advantage over your enemies so you can cover the for, uh, full border and they cannot is obviously a pretty nice advantage. Seed selection, so we can try to get a little bit more population growth going for me. Plus, we get a little bit more manpower out of that. This is now going ahead of time, and I'm not worried about that yet. Do we care about any more of this? No. Let's take a look at our electronics. This is still ahead of time. Don't want to go for signal fires. Don't care about encryption or decryption. Air, we could work on gliders. Don't have the support for that. Could start working on, let's say, some land doctrine. What would be better for me? Do we think we're going to end up going hard on the robots? Because if so, we probably should go for the automated warfare. Lots of uh, lots of robots there. Otherwise, refined warfare, probably out. We're not going to be getting any uh, power armor and stuff. I just don't imagine the heavy special forces are going to be useful to me. Conventional warfare is okay. And asymmetric is really only good if you're going to have like really bad tech. Conventional warfare could work. But I think it's still mostly about planning and entrenchment. Which doesn't excite me that much. Take it back. There's some trooper warfare and there's some mechanized. So if we want to go hard on tanks slash motorcycles, this could work. Pure infantry, this could work. But maybe we want to go for the robots. We also don't have to commit to a decision right now. Um, division attrition, planning speed, max planning, special forces capacity. Hmm. Appeal to refugees could be nice. Production efficiency cap. Vehicles I'm not worried about. Support probably could start working on some of these if I had the right stuff. Crowd gear. Division training time could be nice. Um, I sort of suspect we're going to go for automated warfare. 
I kind of think. Based on the fact that they gave me the option to go for some robotics research boosts early, it makes me think that, that is something that we're going to be wanting to focus on, at least at some point, if not right away. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that, because doctrines take a very, very long time, and we do have four research slots, and we're about to be ahead of time on a lot of our stuff, so I think that's the right call. Alright, we're out of time for this video. Clearly we have to go fight the Wither Dogs, we're going to somehow have to demoralize the crud out of the Black Canyon, and then make a push into Boulder, take over the Boulder Dome, and then see if we can use that to become a powerhouse in Colorado, eventually. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I hope you guys are too. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.